foundation of our discrete math course is the idea of a set. The set was just sort of an intuitive concept. It was this idea of a collection of objects. I'd sometimes represent a set as sort of like a box or a bag, and then you, you'd have various elements inside of it. So in this particular example, I'm saying I've got the element one and two and three. And those are three things that live in this sort of box that is the set. A set is just a collection of objects. Well, what about a set with no objects in it. What exactly is that? Intuitively, I'm thinking about it as it's still a collection, but it's a collection of no objects. So you sort of still have the bag there, if you will. You still have the box there. But there's just nothing inside of it. It's an empty box or it's an empty set. Notationally, there's a couple different ways that are both standard to write this. Uh, one is just a note squiggly brackets, our normal set roster way of writing a set, but just put nothing inside of there, just two squiggly brackets with nothing in the middle. And then otherwise, you can also write the sort of zero with a line through it. Both of these notations are going to be standard ways to represent the empty set. Now, the empty set is sort of a fringe case, but often in mathematics, it's actually helpful for us to investigate exactly what's going on in these sort of edge cases. So let's play around with this empty set a little bit. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is this weird thing. So this is the set that contains the empty set. One second, what, what do you mean by that? It's got the squiggly brackets to note a set, and then it's got the empty set inside of that. Well, this is in effect a box. That's what the outer squiggly brackets are going to have. And inside of the box is only one thing. It's an empty box. It, it sort of maybe looks a little bit like this, I suppose. So this is the set that does have an element in it. Right? The, the big set, the outside set, has something inside of it. It has another set inside of it. It's important to keep in our mind clear sort of what level we're at. If we're asking how many elements does this thing have, we're asking how many elements does the most outside thing have. The most outside set is the squiggly bracket and it does have one element inside of it. It has the empty set. The element that it has is itself a set, the empty set. Okay, well, that was fun. What about this? Is the empty set a subset of the set one, two, three? Now, the set one, two, three, we understand. It's just sort of some box has got three elements, one, two, three in it. And we're asking, is the empty set a subset in it? And maybe we pictorially we'll represent it like this. We've got this one empty box, and we're asking, is it a subset of this box that has three things in it? Okay, so we've got to remind ourselves, what exactly does it mean to be a subset? And our definition was to say that A is a subset of B if any time you have an X in A, the X is also in B. So anytime it's an A, then it's necessarily going to be in B. That's what it means to be a subset. Well, I think that applies in this scenario. Anything that happens to be in A, anything that happens to be in the empty set, well, there's nothing to check. So it works for all of them. There's nothing to check. Any of them that happen to be in the empty set is indeed in the set one, two, three. Uh, there was nothing to check. Or another way to think about it is it's certainly not false, right? If it was false that A was a subset of B, you'd have to say there was something in the empty set that wasn't in the set 1, 2, 3. That's clearly not the case. So if it's false that it's not a subset, it's true that it is a subset. We call this kind of thing vacuously true. As in, it's vacuously true that everything that's in the empty set is indeed inside of the set 1, 2, 3. But well, it's true we say it's vacuously true because there's actually nothing for us to check. There's no element in the empty set that we have to verify does occur in the set one, two, three. It's just sort of true in this trivial or vacuous way. So that was just some fun playing around with the empty set. I hope you enjoyed it. In the future videos, we're probably going to talk more about sets that actually have something inside of them. But it's nice to go and look at these edge cases like the empty set.